Hey, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge. Last week I touched my toes for the first time in my life. That's all I wanted to say this week. Thanks for watching. This has been an art video somehow. Last week I did touch my toes for the first time in my life without bending my knees. It's something that I really hadn't thought much about before except I just assumed that maybe it's just genetic. Maybe I just can't touch my toes. However, someone showed me some corrective exercises and stretches, and after 15 minutes I could touch my toes. It turns out it wasn't genetic. It wasn't that I couldn't just do it. It's that I was too stiff. And if I don't continue to stretch and move the right way, I'll go back to not being able to touch my toes. And that reminded me of a plane ride from about eight or nine years ago. Guys, I don't know this video has to do with art at all. He's like two stories deep and has yet to say anything about layers or construction, character design. Now there was nothing really special about this flight other than the fact that I had a sketchbook with me. Now during this time period, I'd been drawing the same characters for the same comic the same way for years. And I was working on the comic way too much to have time to do other drawing. So the only incremental improvement I was maybe making was the characters in the comic that I was drawing over and over looking a little better each time. But I was in a capital R rut. If someone asked me to draw a new character, chances are I'd follow the same formula I did for the comics and make something that didn't look too different from them. But on this flight, perhaps because I didn't have this self-imposed deadline to make a comic for the next day, and I wasn't too tired from already making that comic, I decided to just draw a couple of Mario characters. And instead of following this same formula that I usually sketched characters out with, I started with wacky silhouettes and shapes, the kind that you don't normally associate with each of these Mario characters, for example, a Koopa with very square shape language. Now I can't find this sketchbook now, and the drawings probably aren't that special anyway, especially compared to what I make now. But looking back on this flight, on this memory, there's two main things that happened when I did this. First of all, for the first time in a really long time, I was having fun drawing, and that was significant. The second thing, though, was that it helped me to break out of this rut that I was in. It helped me to limber up and create characters with exaggerated proportions, uh, bold shape choices, and a strong line of action. And my mindset here going into it was just to have fun as I draw and not draw the way that I usually do. Now, especially when you're learning or trying to improve your art, there's a good chance that you have a strong sense of risk aversion. So playing to your strengths, staying in your comfort zone, drawing things the same way that you have before reduces the chance that you'll fail. Now, I've got to say, coming from my experience of creating and sharing things to an audience that is medium to large, at least larger than when I first started, there's a real sense of this risk aversion. It's almost like a calcification process that comes about honestly because you just don't want to look stupid in front of everybody. And on top of that, when art is your job, there's no such thing as not making art when you don't feel like it. Everything needs to look professional, and a lot of your time is spent making it. Now, all of this stuff, if you're just starting out and learning, having fun on this end of the spectrum, all the way up to someone with similar circumstances to mine, or maybe even more intense circumstances, this can get you really tense, as in your work is safe, derivative, samey, stuck in a rut. And if you're not careful, at a certain point, you can't touch your toes anymore. That's, a, that's metaphorical, although I guess it could be physical too. Now, if you've seen some of my recent videos about doing reference studies, about not making cartoons of cartoons, those are meant to serve as calcification tools, as in helping you to realize the importance of taking your work seriously if you need that. But I know there's a lot of you, myself included, who are actually prone to getting too serious about their art. So let's try and get some help with striking a balance. One of the most important things that you can do is to draw for yourself and to set aside time regularly to do so. Now, of course, this can be a challenge if you already have an existing commitment to post things publicly or regularly, or you might already have work that involves making art. Maybe you have a side project that takes up a lot of your time, but this should be removed from all of that. This work is completely and totally for you. If you choose later on to share it, that's great, 
But the important thing is that you remove that pressure from yourself of what will other people think when they see this work? And then that spiral that starts where you start going, oh no, how bad is this? This work is experimental and you're not going to worry about how bad or weird it turns out. This is a really bad idea, it's raining, but pretend it wasn't. This can definitely be hard if people pleasing is a part of your personality. And if you can't relate to that, just think of a new sketchbook that you get, it's in pristine condition, you want everything in it to be perfect. You want every new page to be a masterpiece. But if every page is a masterpiece, where's like your junk drawer? Like, okay, new analogy, here you go. You need a creative junk drawer. You need a place that is not on display, that is messy and unorganized, but you keep it around because it's got useful stuff in there. Next thing that you're gonna wanna do in this completely private drawing session of yours is you're going to unleash with the fury of a thousand storms the imagination, the passion, and the rage that you had as a child who was completely free of inhibitions. As one of my mentors said recently, nothing stopped you from rolling out your original characters when you were seven years old. So with that in mind, I want you to either metaphorically or literally dump a big box of crayons out on a roll of paper and draw crazy, draw fast, draw loose. Let the loose flow through you. I ain't kidding around here. In practical terms, either draw subject matter that you don't normally draw or draw the things that you usually do in a completely different way. When you do this regularly, if you take regular trips outside of your comfort zone, it's going to allow you to stretch. And the thing about stretching with real muscles is that that is what causes them to grow. Stay tuned at the end of this video to see a time lapse of the illustration from the thumbnail of this video. I don't know if you've noticed recently, but for years I had text in the thumbnails of my videos and maybe some art behind that, but that's really redundant because you've got text in the thumbnail, text in the title. So I thought, why not free up that visual real estate? And recently I've just been making, when I have the time, illustrations to go in those thumbnails. So that's at the end of this video. I'm making two new videos a week here on Character Design Forge and Starting this weekend, I'm doing something new. It's content that you've seen before, just done more regularly, which I think is pretty cool. My username is Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. If you'd like to support me in this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash bageldenizen and get a ton of things in return, including a personalized video critique of your work at the Novice Bard tier. Thank you so much for watching.